The debt this nation owes to our Apollo astronauts, including the man who wore the suit that we unveiled today, we can never fully repay. But today is an installment. The American people have expressed their gratitude by preserving this symbol of courage. Ceremonies throughout the United States taking place today commemorating the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission to the moon. The three-man crew lifted off from Florida on this date in 1969. Here in the nation's capital, the rocket's image will be projected onto the Washington Monument for the next few evenings. But here's the Washington Post's take. The culture that put men on the moon was intense, fun, family unfriendly, and mostly white and male. Let's turn to the editor-in-chief of The Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro. Ben, it's great to have you. And thanks for having me. What about those times compared to now? They certainly did produce some serious results in terms of the space program. Yeah, I mean, to try and tie the bad of the time to the accomplishments of the space program, what are we going to do, take down the flag now? Is the, is the moon landing canceled? I guess we're turning over the moon to the Chinese. What exactly is the point of that article? Yes, we recognize bad things happened in the 60s. Also, a few good things happened in the 60s, like, you know, the signal achievement in the history of mankind, putting a human being on the moon. Mm -hmm. The NASA administrator spoke about the risks involved with the space program. Let's play it for you, and I'll ask you to respond. There's two risks. There's technical risk, and then there's political risk. We would be on the moon right now if it weren't for the political risk. We would be on Mars, quite frankly, by now. What about that, Ben? I think there's truth to that. I mean, the fact is that I think we've become a little bit less ambitious about the, the moon and the, and the planets and the solar system. And I think that private industry is probably what's going to take us there at this point, given the lack of ambition on the governmental level and moving forward. So, you know, I, I, I wish it were different, but I think that is the way it works. One analysis today in The Verge said, quote, a national sense of urgency is simply missing. Instead, NASA is at the whims of lawmakers who prioritize employment in their districts over finding the most efficient route to deep space. Is that correct? I mean, I think that's correct. NASA under President Obama was focused in on climate change like a laser beam and uh, apparently education in, in foreign countries as well on, on science. Yeah, the, the, the exploration of space has been a secondary priority for the United States for a long time. It, it can't remain that way in the future because there will be other nations that are seeking to capitalize on that vacuum. Switching topics a bit, where do you come down on President Trump's tweets, which have dominated the news cycles over the past couple of days? Well, it seems like President Trump and the Democrats are playing a game of hold my beer. So there was a <laughs> giant fight going on between AOC and Nancy Pelosi, uh, and that was delicious for all of the conservatives in the country, Republicans in the country, watching the squad go after Pelosi and Pelosi go back at the squad. And then in the midst of this piranha fight, President Trump decides that he just decides he's just going to jump right in for no apparent reason and issue a tweet that at the very least is not politically beneficial and at most is, is xenophobic. Uh, and that triggers a war. And, and now you've got the squad jumping forward and, and seizing the beer back to hand it back to President Trump and now suggesting that impeachment is on the table and going back to attacking Nancy Pelosi. So it seems as though there isn't a, a clear line of demarcation between crazy and sane anymore. Do these four women, freshman women in the Congress, Ocasio-Cortez, Omar, Tlaib and Presley now become the faces of the Democratic Party after President Trump elevated them? I mean, I think that is the, the one point that President Trump has made that is strategically sound. If he can elevate those four women going into 2020, that's going to benefit, benefit him an awful lot. They're deeply unpopular by most of the poll statistics that are out there. So, yeah, I mean, I think that Nancy Pelosi has been forced to embrace them in a way she wasn't last week when she was basically downplaying playing their impact and trying to knock them off center stage. President Trump tweeted during our show praising Republican unity on the vote today. Only four Republicans went along with Democrats condemning the president's tweets. Your thoughts on that? I mean, I think the Republicans are in a very difficult position. On the one hand, I think most Republicans don't like what the president tweeted. On the other hand, the Democrats are playing a pretty cynical game where they can't even condemn anti-Semitism within their own party. They condemn all the bad things more broadly. But as soon as President Trump says something that they find to be racist, then all of a sudden they're going to take their very strong stand. It feels like a political football. I think most Republicans feel that way. Ben Shapiro, I could pick your brain all night, but we got to go. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot.